on, grab your Bible, grab your Bible, your phone, your tablet. Let me see what we got on YouTube. I'm still having a little issues here. We've been fighting all day with air and with signals and internet and all kind of stuff. It's been a, I bet I can, I bet somebody, I can find somebody to agree with me. It's been an extremely long day. It's been a long day today. Anybody can agree with me? It's been a long day today. But it's something about when I started walking down that hallway, I got some energy. I got some energy when I started coming into the house. When I started coming to the house, Lord, I can't see y'all on nowhere. Uh, my, my phone won't let me do anything here, but it's all good. I know you're there. Keep checking in. Keep doing what you need to do. Come on, we're going uh, to the book of Philippians. I want to read several verses of scripture just to kind of set some context of what it is that we've been discussing and what we've been talking about. And we're going to jump into the word of the Lord on tonight, the word of the Lord on tonight, Philippians chapter two, we're going to read verses 19, 19 through 30, Philippians chapter two, I know I normally just read a verse of scripture, uh, maybe a, a two at the most, but I want to set this context, Philippians chapter two, uh, begin reading that verse number 19, it says, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, it's all on the screen, uh, so that, so that I too may be, che be cheered by news of you. For I have no one like him who will be genuinely concerned for your welfare. For they all seek their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know Timothy's proven worth. How as a son, as a, with a father, he has served with me in the gospel. I hope, therefore, to send him just as soon as I see how it will go with me. And I trust in the Lord that shortly I, may, I myself will come also. I have thought it necessary to send you Aphrodite, my brother and fellow worker and fellow soldier, and your messenger and minister to my need. Verse 26 says, for he has been longing for you been longing for you all and has been distressed because you heard that he was ill indeed he was ill near to death but God somebody say but God but God had mercy on him and not only on him but on me also lest I should have have sorrow upon sorrow I am the more eager to send him therefore that you may rejoice at seeing him again that I may be less anxious. Verse 29 says, So receive him in the Lord with all joy and honor such men. Last verse, verse 30. For he nearly died for the work of Christ, risking his life to complete what was lacking in your service to me. Somebody ought to say amen, amen. to the reading of God's word tonight we are still in our verse by verse study of the book of Philippians uh, and, and the, the series theme or topic is just simply the joy of the local churches part 16 and this is the profile of a disciple the profile of a disciple in anticipation of God speaking to you tonight in our time that we have together why don't you just put your hands together and give God some praise <laughs> some glory and some, and some honor. We've been walking through this book of Philippians, and this has been an absolute blessing to us. And we have been discussing the fact that the Apostle Paul uh, was writing this letter to this church at Philippi as a response to them. Uh, the church found out that Paul was, doing, doing, was going through some things. They actually found out that he was in prison, and they sent Paul some supplies to be able to continue to help him on his journey as he continued to further the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they also sent a brother that we're going to spend some time talking about tonight to help him, to assist him. Paul was going through a lot in his life, and Paul's overarching theme, and this is why it's the theme of our study, Paul was letting them know that, yes, they want to kill me. Yes, I'm in prison. In fact, in fact, as I'm writing this, I'm in prison. I've been going through a lot of things, but Paul said, in spite of what I've been going through, I still have my joy. That's what, that's what Paul was saying. Paul said, I still have my joy. And so it is, it is good news to you and I that no matter what it is that we experience and we go through, you and I can maintain, we can hold on to our joy. We don't let our circumstances, our dilemmas to rock us and to reel us in such a way that where we lose our foothold or our positioning in the things of God. So Paul, as we came into chapter 2, Paul began to tell the people of God, since you're believers, since you're children of God, if there be any confirmation, 
confirmation. There be an encouragement. If you have the Holy Spirit, if God has saved you, if God has done anything in your life, the apostle says that we ought to make sure that we maintain the unity of the faith and maintain the joy that we have in the Lord. And Paul said we ought not to, in, in order for us to do this, we can't think about ourselves. We can't be selfish. We just can't think about how we're going to make it, how we're going to advance, but we must put the needs of others in front of our own personal needs. And then the, the, the church of Philippi must was a lot like truth and love. They said, Ooh, I don't know about that now, Paul. What you mean? Put somebody else's needs in front of my needs. And here the apostle used Jesus Christ as an example. Philippians 2, 5, verses 5 through 9. The apostle says, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. So he gives us the ultimate example. And that may still be a little too lofty because Jesus is our ultimate example. And then Paul continued to go and he said, you know what? I guess Jesus is our ultimate example, but, but Jesus, Jesus, as he came down, he deposited something on the inside of us. And, it, and it's what Paul said. God is literally working some things in us all. He's working some things in us. It's God that worketh in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. What do you mean, brother pastor? I just simply mean this, that God wants us in his perfect plan, his perfect will, more so than I want to be in his perfect will, his perfect plan. So God will work it in me, but then he goes on and says, I got to work out my soul salvation. So God is working it in, and Jesus got to let me work it out. I got to work, I got to work it out. He works it in, and I got to work it out. And here, this is what Paul is saying, that here, it's a synergetic effort. It's not just God, it's not just me, but it's us working together. And this is what Paul is saying as a result to this Philippian church. He's saying that God desires to use you. God desires to allow your reach to continue. God desires for you to be impactful in the earth. But in order for that to transpire, you must posture your lives in such a way. In fact, Paul says, you have to be a disciple. You have to be a disciple. We, we talked about on last week, and I know y'all was tuning in. I know y'all was watching, and I know everybody at home was watching and all that. We, talk, we just simply talked about <laughs> We just simply talked about the fact that here we must be uh, have an aligned testimony. I don't know about you, but I know a lot of folk that they say one thing, they confess one thing, but they possess another thing. And here we talked about an aligned testimony. And really, we're just piggybacking on that from last week because here the apostle is saying not only should we have an aligned life, I believe that we need to get ourselves in a place that's going to be the thing that's going to help us no matter what state we're in, no matter what condition we're in and that is being a disciple and Paul gives us he gave us Jesus as the ultimate example then Paul uses himself as an example then he used Timothy as an example and then he used Ephroditus as an example of how we can live this thing out because Jesus that's Jesus Jesus did all that he's the perfect one he's the son of God that's why he did that and Paul said okay I hear you now let me give you some individuals that you can be able to see and have some skin on them so you can be able to see that whatever it is that God calls us to do he gives us the ability to do it that's all I'm trying to say God does not call us to do a thing and does not enable us to do a thing but if God calls us to do a thing he gives us the ability to do it and the way that we do it is through discipleship somebody say discipleship let, let, let's unpack this. This is going to be good, y'all. It was good at noon, so I know it, I know it works. So I know it works. It works. It worked to do. So let's see, let's see how, how, what, what God has to say to it. Discipleship, first definition, just simply this. Discipleship in the Old Testament is fundamentally about learning what is required from the Torah and submitting it to, and submitting to it in obedience. What's the Torah? You may ask. The Torah, just simply the first five books of the Bible. I was going to say Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's New Testament. <laughs> the Torah, just simply Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Me. That's the first five books of the law. Somebody say Torah, Torah, Torah. That, that's the Torah. And that's all that the Old Testament saints had. Later came the prophets. Later came the poetry books. Later came the wisdom books. Later came the history books. But, but, but discipleship fundamentally was just simply learning what the Torah or the word says and then submitting to it. And here it goes on to say the Hebrew terms that are closely related to discipleship is to instruct, is to teach. And look at it as they both strongly imply, look at this, this is good, a change in behavior as a result of the instruction. 
it is not just getting the instruction, but as a result of getting the instruction, I govern myself according. That's what discipleship is about. It's not just about me accumulating, not just about me hearing. It's not just me attaining. So many people, they, they, they mentally assent to facts. They, they, they believe that Jesus Christ lived. They, they believe that he lived and he died and he was buried and he rose again. They believe that, but it's not about mentally ascending to a fact, but it's about me learning what has happened and me making the proper adjustments as a result of what has happened. That's what discipleship is about, but it gets even better. Look at the next one. It says in the New Testament, the word disciple expressed the idea, look at this, of discipleship more narrowly. It gets a little more narrow. Look at it. The, the, the root meaning is to learn. Somebody say to learn. It is to learn, which, which again ties discipleship to the concept of learning and instruction. Here it is. It's going to make it pop for you. Like the Hebrew terms, hasenev, <laughs> these words also refer not only to transfer of information, but also to the transformation of one's lifestyle in order to make one, in order to, in order to be more like one, like the one that, that is instructing them or the teacher. Let me, let me, let me say it again because it's not just about the transfer of information, but it's about the transformation because of the information. And that's why God gives me the word of God. God gives me the word of God. This is what true discipleship is about. It's about me hearing the information and the information leads to inspiration and the inspiration leads leads to transformation. That, that is what discipleship is all about. And here, my friend, there's so many people that where we'll, we'll fill up our notebooks, we'll get all the papers, we'll get all the handouts, and we'll get books and books and books, and we'll learn, and we'll do this and do that. But it's not about me getting information as much as it is about the information changing my life. And this is what's wrong with the body of Christ today, because we got a whole lot of word. We got a whole lot of knowledge. We know about this. We can name it and claim it. We can blab it and grab it. We can call it and haul it. We know all 27 names of God. We know Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rive, Rafa, Jehovah Shalom. We know we know El Elyon. We know Jehovah Tisis Canoe. We know all of that stuff. But then we don't see the transformation in my life. Well, I want to know, bro, I want to know man of God, woman of God. I want to know what you going down to that church for on a Thursday, a Thursday night to hear the word. What does that do for you? Does it do something for you? Does it, does it get you to the place of where you're taking the word of God and allowing the word of God to transform you or you just just like me. We, we, got, we got to have a, a disciple life. Somebody say a disciple life. We need to have a, a disciple life. And this is what we need. We need, we need disciples. We don't need members. We need disciples. We, we don't need members. We don't need church goers. Come on. That's a, that's just, that's because, just because a church says church on the outside, just because it say ministries on the outside, that doesn't mean that that's the people of God on the inside. We don't need no church folk. We need some disciples. So here, literally, uh, well, here it is. At the first point, come on, fill it in. I got to whip you back in shape. Come on, let me whip you back in shape. Come on, it's, it's okay. You can get a pen. It's okay. I don't want to you. Look, let's write it down. Look, an aligned life, because it's not on there. I, I took it off inadvertently. An aligned life, but it's on the screen. An aligned life is a disciple life. This is our year of alignment, 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 an aligned life, uh, to have an aligned testimony. It is, it is really a disciple life. That, that's, what, that's what God is after. That's what God is after. He didn't say go plant churches. He didn't say go uh, build buildings. He said go make disciples. That's, that's our responsibility. It's his responsibility to build the church. It's our responsibility to go and make disciples. It's our responsibility to go and do what it is that he so called us to do. It is literally the, the discipled and disciplined is really a controlled life. And that's what I want to ask you real quick. And I'm going to get about your business. Everybody on YouTube, I'm going to get off your business in a second. But I want to know who, who, who controls your life? Uh, is, my, is my life controlled by my emotions, by my feelings, by what I think and how I feel? Or, or is my life controlled and governed by the word of God? Is my life governed and controlled by what the culture is saying? Or is my life governed and controlled by Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit is leading me and guiding me. Holy Spirit is telling me to shut up. Holy Spirit is telling me to leave it alone. Holy Spirit is saying, walk away. This is what a disciplined life, this disciple life is an aligned life. Let me keep on going. Because here last week we understood pack this last week we began on this journey and I'm just going this is just review it's just review let me tell you let me walk you up to where we are it's not on your paper just kind of follow us because I want you to get the context on what it is that the apostle Paul is talking about so we can be able to wrap this chapter up I don't know about you you're probably trying to wonder how am I going to finish this it's taking me hard it's hard enough to finish one verse and now I jumped off the portion and got verse 17 through 30 can I tell you it worked because I did it at noon it worked I can do it so here but y'all got to y'all got to talk back to me though if y'all be quiet that make me feel like y'all don't understand 
understand. And the quieter you are, and the more y'all don't understand, so I got to keep on breaking that thing down and keep explaining and explaining and explaining. But the more you talk back to you, boy. Yeah. All right, there we go. There they go. And preach. I heard somebody say, preach, Rev. Oh, that was good. I didn't even say anything. That was good. I didn't even, I didn't even say anything. I said, oh, that was good right there, Pastor. He said, oh, y'all talk, talk back to him. It's okay. I've been preaching to a camera, y'all, since November on Thursday nights. Come on here. Will y'all help, help a brother out? <laughs> Clear. Can we get a, can we, anyway, and, and a line, and a line life is marked by sacrifice. This is what we discussed last week. And the line life is not on your paper, just on the notes. It's just from this was a review from last week. And the line life is marked by sacrifice. Paul literally said, go back and listen to it if you happen to miss it. I know you was, you, you was super busy. You weren't able to see it. Look what it said. Because uh, Paul says, I pour my life out as a drink offering. Paul literally says that my life is an offering. My life is a sacrifice. And so when I make sacrifices in the day and time that we live in, the only sacrifices we make are for us. And here, a line life is a life of sacrifice. Second thing we discussed last week was an aligned life is one marked by service. Not just sacrifice, but service. I need to serve my local church. I need to serve not even my local church as I go. Everything I do, I'm going to do it as unto the Lord. And Paul says this is a sacrificial offering. And here we, we discussed last week, it's on the screen. An aligned life is one marked by joy, look at this, because of. Oftentimes we say I got joy in spite of what I'm going through. Paul says, I'm going through something. That's why I got joy. <laughs> you missed it. Hey, we, we say I got joy in spite of, but Paul says, because I'm going through something, that's what causes me joy. Because Paul knows on the other side of the trial, on the other side of me going through, the Lord has something for me. Lord, there we go. I love it. Lord, have rest. I love it. Can I tell you that we, we still, we still got our joy. Look, look what else. Here, here's this is good. And the line life is on the, it's on the screen, y'all. And the line life is one marked by their teacher. Paul said, I'm getting ready. I need to come to you. You, you. I need to come to you, Church of Philippi, but I can't because I'm locked up. I can't because I'm in prison. But he says, I'm getting ready to send to you Timothy. I like saying Timothy that way. I, I'm going to send you Timothy. And he says, I'm going to send him because there is no one like him. It literally, it literally says in verse 20, Philippians 2, 20, it literally says he's like soul. We got the same soul. We're like-minded. He said, I'm getting ready to sin. Get ready to sin, Timothy, because he, he's my son in the gospel. He's my son in the faith. And he, I'm getting ready to send him to you to help you, to assist you. And I'm going to send you to him. A line of life is one marked by compassion. Compassion. Compassion because this brother, not only is he no, nobody like him, but this brother is going to care about you. He's going to be concerned about your welfare and your well-being. He's not going to try to get from you. He's going to try to give to you. And he said, I'm going to send this brother Timothy. And then here we discuss in the line life is one marked by, look at this, by being others focused. You'll see this again and again and again, this entire chapter, because this is what this is about. This is what real discipleship is about. I can't be a true disciple as long as I'm selfish. I can't be a true disciple as long as I'm inwardly focused. I'm just thinking about me. I'm only thinking about me. I can't. And this is why Paul did this. Again, when we look at the beginning of the chapter, Philippians chapter 2, I think it's verse number 4. He says we ought to live this life as if we are putting the knees in front of somebody else. We ought to put others' knees before my own knees. And when we read that, we're like, oh, the devil is a lie. I get I got needs. I got, I, got, I got stuff I need. I got stuff I need. Yeah, that's what he said in verse 4. He said, let each one of you look not at his own interests, but also the interests of others. So Paul said, that was too lofty. So, so let, me, let me give you an example the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he comes and he uses himself as an example. Then he uses Timothy as an example. He's other focused. And then the last thing we left off from last week. I remember y'all remember, right? Y'all remember y'all put your pen right here last week when we were talking about it. He said, see, in a line life. Was one marked by faithfulness. Oh, this lady, there, there you go. There, the rest of them over here on the side, over there, that, that wall of fame there. All y'all over here, does that mean it's cold? Is that what it is? Is that what it is? Too cold over there? Because everybody over here, I see Sister Vaughn, boy, she'd be looking like an Eskimo. She'd be in this thing, she'd be like, <laughs> but anyway, so it must be cold. Y'all, is it cold? Is it too cold? Y'all okay? Y'all good? You know, we got the air fix now, so I'm ready to freeze y'all out of here. I'm ready to free, ready to freeze y'all about it. Anyway, so y'all just, y'all just give them a signal or something. If y'all, y'all be right. And, and line life is marked by faithfulness. Come on, hallelujah, faithfulness. Look, look what we what we discuss. Here it is, Philippians two twenty two. Look at it. He says, I'm, I'm sending you Timothy. Look what he says. But you know Timothy's proven worth. 
He, he says, man, I want to come to you. Paul said, I want to come, but I'm, I'm locked down. Come on, this is a Bible study, y'all. Come on, I, I, never, I never understood how, how Christians get bored with the Bible. This is Bible study, y'all. So we got to walk through the word of God, and we unpack the word of God. We're going to see what God says. Here, he says, I'm, 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 I want to come to you, but I can't. But I'm going to send Timothy. And he says, I'm sending you somebody that you know. I'm sending you somebody that you know. And not only that, that you know him, you know it's proven work. Let's unpack that word. Proven work means dependability. It means the quality of being proven to be dependable or reliable. And Paul said, I'm sending you somebody that's trustworthy. I'm sending you somebody that you know his track record. You know what he's gone through. You know that he's been there. And we talked about the proverb writer says, to put confidence in an unfaithful man is like putting confidence in, in a tooth that is broken. To put confidence in, a, in, a, in an unfaithful man is like putting your pressure on a foot that's out of joint. And here you, you can't trust. And here a lot of times, come on, this is what our problem is in the kingdom of God. We don't have, whew, we, don't, we don't have more. God doesn't trust us with more because we don't handle what he's already given us. And God is not going to give me more whenever it is I don't handle and take care of what he's already given. If I keep my studio apartment sloppy, Joe, come on here, then why is he going to give me a 5,000-seat mansion? Why is he going to give me a 5,000-foot mansion, rather? See, in my mind, that 5,000-seat auditorium. Why, why would he give me a 5,000-seat auditorium when, I, when we don't clean this? Come on here. When, this looking, when the tile all crickety and when the toilet is shaking and people got to pray to, to use the restroom here, why, why would he give us with a new... A new edifice if we don't take care of what we have but we ought to be faithful somebody say faithful we ought to be faithful what it is that we have i, I can't re-preach it this was last week y'all remember this was last week but here look, look, look what paul says let me go further because this is good look at look at timothy he's given us the profile of a line life he's given us timothy he said i'm telling you this brother you know he's faithful but look at it and a line life is one marked by uh oh here it is marked by honor Mm, yeah, it is. It's marked by honor. Here we 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 can ready to go down the street now. Get ready to go down the street. Come on. I'm glad it's already cold in here. Come on here. Let me tell you. Let me tell you here we, because because it, it's marked by honor and a lot of life marked by honor. Look, I'm not making this up. And that's why I love about walking through books of the Bible. We're going through James. Y'all been with us. We went through Mark. We went through Ephesians. Come on. We went through the Book of Acts. Come on. We went through Esther and Ruth and all these books. Ruth rather not Esther. We went through all these books. And I love it because the prophet Forrest Gump told us that life is like a box of chocolates. You just don't never know. He prophesied. You just don't never know what you're getting. And when you go verse by verse, you just don't never know what you're going to get. You just, you just talk about things. That's why we need the whole counsel of God. And we don't cherry pick, but we walk through the word of God. And here we, we get what God said. Look what Paul said in Philippians chapter 2, verse 22. Y'all y'all with me? Y'all good? Y'all good? Look at it. Look, he says, I'm sending you Timothy. You know his track record, but look what he says. How as a son with a father, he has served with me in the gospel. Mm. Look, 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 this brother Timothy walks in honor. Paul, Paul says, this brother has served alongside me as a spiritual son, and I was his spiritual father. Here, this is a picture of submission. This is a picture of meekness. This is a picture of, of the fact that here Timothy can be trusted because he didn't compete with Paul. Timothy can be trusted to be able to go to do the work of the ministry and continue to go and help and to assist the church at Philippi because he didn't compete with Paul. But no, he submitted to his tutelage. He submitted to his teaching. And here he walked in honor. He walked, he walked in honor. Here he, Timothy didn't compete much like how foolish would it be for a son to try to compete with a father. A son don't compete with a father. A daughter should not compete with a mother. But no, we ought to complete. We ought to complete one another. And we ought to be, if anything... We're after, we're after the, the, the endorsement of our father. We're after the, 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 the validation of our father. We're after the affirmation of our parents. We don't compete with our parents in, in the natural or in the spiritual. But we ought to, we ought to honor them. Somebody say honor. honor. Honor is, come on, let me do, let me do this. Honor is to be weighty. That's what honor is. Honor is to be weighty. To be Heavy upon, that's honor, to be weighty, to be heavy upon. The amount at which, look at this, something is valued. The price or the value, that, that, there's some things that, that you and I have in the natural that we, we reverence that, we value that a little more than other things. 
You, you know, that thing that you just kind of got, you bought something, they gave you something free. You know, that's, that you don't really, you know, you, you know, you appreciate it, you use it, you do what you need to do. But, 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 that, but that gift that someone gave you that's going on with the be with the Lord. I, I, got, I got a pair of pajamas that them. It's the last gift my mother bought me. I've told y'all this before. It's the last gift my mother bought me. I don't know if it was my birthday. I don't remember if it was, it was, it was a Christmas. I don't remember. It's the last gift she bought me. A, a pair of probably 1999 Hanes uh, pajamas. And I got and I got my suits lined up, and I got my PJs right there with my suit, cause that, that's a gift from my. I, I honor that, and I, and, I and, every, and every now and then I put it on. And let it see, you know, when I put it on, I must be feeling all melancholy. I'm thinking about my, I got my mind on my mama, my mama, my mind. I got my PJs on, cause I'm thinking I remember mama in a special way. Come on, I got, I'm thinking about mama. <laughs> it's, it's a, I, I value that, and the point is. <laughs> The PJs did not make me honor the PJs. I place value on the PJs. When you, when you honor someone, the person can't force you to honor them. You must place your honor upon them. It, you, you, it, it's, something, it's something that is not, that's not given just, we're going to talk about the principle and the person not in position. It's not just a position. Just because the person has a position, it does not mean you honor them. You must place your honor on this individual, on the individual that is, whether it's a natural here, whether it's government, whether it's employer, whether it's your home, whether it, it doesn't matter. Anybody that's been given delegated authority, I'm to honor them, and the individual must be able to do so. And this Timothy walked in honor. Let's keep going because it gets good, y'all. Because a true disciple, come on, we, we, we merge in this. We merge in this with alignment, and we also with discipleship. So a true disciple, look at this, sees properly. This is good. I, I, I can see properly. You know how you can honor, how you honor properly? You have to see properly. Yeah. This is good. This is good. Come on, look, look at it. Because I, I can't think of no one, a better picture than Elisa and, and Elijah. I can't think of a better picture than, 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 than Elijah and Elisha. I can't, I can't think of a better picture. I got to stop. I got to leave her alone. But yeah, I can think of no better picture than, than the master prophet and his understudy. How he honored the one that he served. Look at it, 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 19. Look at it. It says, when they had crossed, look at this. When they had crossed the Jordan, look at this. Elijah said to Elisha, look at it. Ask what I shall do for you before I'm taken from you. And Elisha said, look at this. Please let there be a double portion of your spirit upon me. You, we, we know this. We, we quote this a lot. We say we want a double portion of the spirit. We want a double portion of the anointing. But that, that my friend, is not talking about a double portion of spiritual blessings. That's not talking about a double portion saying, I want a, I want a bigger name than yours, Elijah. Elijah was a bad boy. Elijah the one said, it's not going to rain no more until I say so. Elijah was a bad boy. Elijah's the one said, I, 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 God said, God said, here, I, I'm going by the brook. I'm, I'm down by the river. And God fed this joker but with a raven and some water. <laughs> Come on here. For, for three years, Elijah was a bad boy. And here, you, you mean to tell me you want, you, you, you're talking about you want double portion? What, 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 is, what, is, what is Elisha talking about? Elisha's not talking about miracles per se. He's literally talking about sonship. Yeah, yes, yes, he is. He's literally talking about sonship because for three times, read it when you get a chance in 2 Kings, and three times Elijah tested Elisha's resilience. He told him to go back. He said, I will not go back. He said, go on back. He said, no, I will not go back. Go on back. All the other people talking. Everybody was trying to get him to go back. Everybody was saying, your master's going to be taken from your head today. Your master's going to be taken from your head. He said, be quiet. I know. Shut up. Leave me alone. I'm following. I'm following my master. I'm following the man of God. Elijah, Elijah was, Elisha was following Elijah. It's literally talking about sonship because here, Elisha saw himself as a son. And he says, I want a double portion of what you have, sonship, you know, the, in, the, the, in, the, in the Hebrew custom, that's what the prodigal son, he came to his father. He said, Father, give me my possession. Give me my inheritance. That, 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 that was reserved for the sons whenever the father was gone, especially the oldest son. The, the, the younger boy get a little something, get a little scratch. But the oldest son get a double portion. And this is what Elisha is discussing. This is what he's talking about. Because look at it. Did, did I give y'all that Deuteronomy? Did y'all put that in for me? That Deuteronomy? Give me Deuteronomy. It's not on your paper. Just take notes. Did y'all put it in for me? Because I sent, I sent it in. Come on, give it, put it on the screen for me. Deuteronomy 21, 17. Look at it. It says, but he shall acknowledge. Look at the law. It says, but he shall acknowledge the what? The firstborn. the firstborn, the son of the unloved. Look at this. By giving him what? A double 
portion, a double portion. And this is what Elisha, follow, the, follow my, part, my point here. See, Elisha is saying, Lord, give me. He's saying to his master, he's saying, give me a double portion. Not of your miracles, but of being your son. Because how many know that your children don't have to earn anything from you? They're going to get from you just because they're your what? Just because they're your children. This is what, this is what Elijah is saying. He said, I want to I wanna be, be a son. Look, what it, look at the response of the man of God. St. Kings 2, 2 and 10. It says, and he said, Elijah said back to Elisha, he says, you have asked me a hard thing. Let me say something to you. That you, 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 you probably can say amen under breath with the mask on. Probably can say it under breath. It's hard honoring. <laughs> it's not easy honoring. It, it, it's, it's easy to honor somebody from afar off. It's easy to admire somebody you don't really know. It's easy to admire somebody who really don't know you. It's, it's easy to honor them. It's easy to honor folk to hear you just see them every now and then. And, then, and I've learned, I've learned this, and maybe y'all can say amen. Is I've learned, maybe it was better that I never got close to you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've learned, I've learned, and I've admired some people, and I looked up at some people, and then when I finally got in their presence, I'm saying, well, what was, was I high? What was wrong with me? What, what was wrong? What was wrong with me for me to feel the way I felt? What, 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 was, what, what was I missing? Was I delusional? What was, what was it? Because it's, it's closer for me, it's better for me not to get close to you. But when you're close to somebody and, you, and you're walking behind them and you're walking step by step with them, here, it, oh, it's a, it's a, that's a hard thing. It's hard being a son. <laughs> yeah, 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 it is. Yeah, it is. This is what this is what the, this is what this is what the man of God has said. The man of God says, "You ask me a hard thing." Look what he says, verse ten. It's still up there. If you see me, look at this. If you see me, if you what? If, if you if you see me, y'all follow me because I said that that a person a person that that is has an aligned life or a true disciple, they do what? They see properly. <clears throat> he said, "If you see me," he said, "If you see me." It shall be, it shall be so for you. He said, but if you do not see me, it shall not be so. What you mean, bro, pastor, if you see me? Okay, you just when you see. No, it's not just about Elijah being caught up, him seeing him. Look what, look what this Hebrew word means, to see. This phrase, it's two words in Hebrew. It is to perceive by sight. Look at this. Or to have the power to perceive by sight. This is good. To understand. To reveal, to inspect. In other words, a lot of folk saw Elijah. But everybody didn't see Elijah. <laughs> y'all, you, y'all, y'all missing me. Y'all missing me. See, 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 see you, you can see, you can see. Like, again, honor must be placed on the individual. Honor must be placed on the thing. Honor cannot be mandated and, and, and forced. But no, you must see. And here, that, that, that's what's the problem in the body of Christ. And that's why the enemy is always fighting the pulpit and the pews. That's why the enemy is always fighting the pastor and the parishioners. That's why the enemy is always fighting the men of God, the women of God from the sheep. Oh, because can I tell you, because the enemy don't want you to see properly, because if you don't see properly, you can't receive properly. Ooh. Oh, you better preach, Pastor Kobe. You better, you better preach this thing. My George, my George Jefferson. Don't bother my George Jefferson. <laughs> I got to go. I got time to play. I got to go. Praise him on the concert. I got to go. Look, so, so, so listen. She said, look, look, I just, I'm just glad y'all back. I was just happy there's somebody in here. This, that dog on camera don't do nothing for me. He don't do nothing for me, but I appreciate you. Anyway, at least I can talk about y'all. Look, so, look, <laughs> Elijah, look at this, verse 12. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is where you, you may think I'm off. You think I'm, I'm just, I'm just, it's just conjecture. I'm just reading into the text. No, I'm not. Look what he says, Second Kings 2, 12. Look what he says. And Elisha, he did what? He saw it. Look at this. He cried, my prophet, my prophet. <laughs> he said, miracle worker, miracle worker. He said, my father, my father. There, there was a shift. Come on, I'm trying, trying to help you here. I'm trying to help you in the household of faith, in, in, our, in our natural households. There's a father, there's a mother. In the spiritual household, there's a father, there's a mother. And in order for me to be able to receive what God has for me, there must be a shift. In other words, what am I saying? You just cannot, just, you just can't receive and just dummy down your spiritual leaders and put them on your level and just look at them only as individuals. You just can't receive the word of God like just 
a man, when you just when you get your eyes just on the man, you're never going to progress. You're never going to advance. You're never going to mature. But no, you got to be able to look beyond what you see to be able to see what you can't see. Lord have mercy. You got to look beyond what you see in order for you to see. And so here we got to ask the question, so how do you see your leaders? What I need to ask you. If he's a teacher, even to see, they even call the fire department. So who called the lamp? Who called the police on me? One of y'all called, y'all called them, called the police on me. Lord have mercy. Lord. And got called the police in my own, in my own church. Let me say, hey, can I tell you? <laughs> it reminds me of when the when the fire marshal came and we was, we was in here having having service. And when the fire marshal came, we were supposed to be in here back in the day. It was 2018, 27, something, something like that. We was having a connection class in the lobby. And boy, we were so scared. And I saw this big old tall white fella coming and an all black coming to the door. I said, oh Lord, they finna come take me to jail. Right in front of my people. I was trying to figure out how I can go in the back, how I can slide out of here. This big joker, he come to the door. This big old tall white guy coming to the door. And I said, Lord, 50505, lock the door, lock the door. <laughs> it was Mr. Last. It was Mr. Last trying to get in the dome. I'm like, man, if you don't get up out of here, man, I think you finna tell him to rest me. He is Mr. Last. He coming to the You remember that? I was scared, boy, I was scared. I was I was I was I was looking good on the outside, but I was scared, boy. I was so scared. I was like, Lord, I'm gonna go to jail in front of everybody. Lord have mercy. Lord, don't do it. And after that, I was like, we, the Lord's moving on us. We're not, we're not going to do a connection class until, until we get back full occupancy. I shut, that, I shut that puppet down so fast. Anyway, I'm too little to go to jail, y'all. I'm too little. Anyway, look, so, so how do you see your man of God? <laughs> That's funny, for real. You remember that, too. I was scared, for real. Y'all think I'm playing? I'm all black. Pittsburgh Steelers. I remember that jacket. Like every time I see that jacket, I'm like, man, take that jacket off. <laughs> anyway, let me go. I got time to play. The clock on my back. Let me go. How, how you see your spiritual leader? If they if they're your teacher, why aren't you learning from them? If they're your mentor, why aren't you following their example? If they're your counselor, why aren't you following their advice? If they're your leader, why aren't you? Following, following them. And here is how you see. And here, in other words, let me, let me help you because this, I love walking through the book of Philippians. You just don't know what you're going to get. Here, look what this man of God said. He'll be here Sunday. Look what he said. You, you, you will not be blessed from a vessel that you don't honor. I'm not, I'm not just talking about pastors. I'm not talking about preachers. If you can be in a worship service, I asked noonday. They couldn't think of anything. They couldn't think of any time. But I'm going to ask y'all. I, I'm telling you, I, I, I've, been, I've been in services before. And the individual, was, whether they were singing, whether they were preaching, whether they were doing anything. And I was like, what they might be saying is right. But somebody else got to tell me. <laughs> y'all yeah, yeah, not going to go, talk to me here. Uh, okay, okay, so y'all going to do me like that. Y'all don't, y'all don't, y'all don't know. Y'all don't, y'all don't, y'all don't, y'all don't get a little too close to somebody. And they, they act one way at the pulpit. And then when they get in the pulpit, they want to act, they want to act a whole other different. They, they grab, they grab the mic. And now they get sanctified and sanctimonious and all that. And everybody falling all out. And everybody, everybody crying. And you trying to figure out what they, what, what they crying about. What, what, I don't, I don't feel nothing. Y'all ain't going to, y'all going to do me like that. Y'all going to do me like y'all ain't never, y'all ain't never like, I, 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 that's good. But I, 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 you Somebody else got to tell me. Because, because, of the, because of the vessel, it's difficult to be blessed by something you don't honor. You can be eating. I use this example at noonday. You can be eating something. Mm, so it's cold. Say, mm, this is so good, Pastor. Mm, this is so good. Here, come try it. And I look at that and I'm like, what is that? Sight before bite, right? It could be good. But, but, it's, but it, I, don't, I don't like the way it looks. And so the, the, point, the point is, you, I won't be blessed by her grub because I don't like how it looks. And the point I'm trying to make is, is that when it comes down to the way we view and see, this, the, the, the responsibility is on the leader and the responsibility is on the people to make sure I'm not living dishonorable. And then I can't be in the posture that whenever it is I start getting led, now all of a sudden I got a problem. They back, they back, they back. Linda, Lisa, Lawrence, and Lily. I appreciate you, girl. They back. I've, I've been in, I've been in some times and where persons be like, boy, Pastor, I just love you. You're the greatest man of God I've ever served. And I just, I, I'll never leave, and I'll just, I just, oh, thank God for you. Until I start straightening them out. 
or until I do something that they don't like. And I was like, I, and then they say, be like, I think my season is up. I think my season. I'd be like, well, hold on. That was 48. That's a quick season. I thought, <laughs> I, I, just, I, just, I just got done building a memorial. And you just, oh, my God. Oh, y'all don't know. Uh, YouTube, they're they, they not doing me right, YouTube. YouTube, they're not doing me right. What? You won't see what's not significant. And, and your perception, watch me, your perception affects your reception. Your perception affects your reception. And here, this is what, this is what, this is what Paul says, Timothy is my son. And here we have, to, we have to learn how to honor. So I've given you this before, but it bears repeating. And here, let me give you this because it, 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 speaks to, it speaks to life in general. It speaks to every part of our life. And it speaks to the kingdom of God. And we must know how to flow in it. There's four dimensions of honor. Somebody say that. There's four dimensions of honor. There's four dimensions of honor. The first one is a true disciple. Look at this. Understands the principle of honor. There's a principle of honor. What, what do you mean, bro, Pastor, about the, the principle of honor? A principle is just simply a fundamental truth. It's something that's morally correct. So what am I saying? I'm trying to tell you that, that I am to just honor individuals and honor people just off GP, yeah. off general purposes. <laughs> Not God's property, Kurt Franklin. No, I'm saying all for general purposes. I'm saying, do you want a resolution? No, not right now. I'm trying to tell you, look, I'm to honor God, honor, honor people just off of, listen to this, just off of my, just off of, uh, just off of principle. It's a foundational truth. Just, oh, it's, a, it's a morally right thing to do. But you know why that's as difficult to do in our day and time? We live in a culture, live in a society, we have no more morals. We live in a culture and a society that where we live in this postmodern society that where we, we've done away with the morals. We live in a society that where what's true to you is true to you. And what's true to me is true to me. We live in a society that has dismantled truth. We live in a society we don't have any morals, no values. We don't have anything that sticks to the community and sticks to families. But no, we say, whatever I believe, that's what I believe. Whatever you believe, that's what you believe. We have no, we dismantle truth. We have no morals. We have no, no values. And we deconstruct anything. Watch it in our mindset. Watch it. Look at the mindset. Look at the culture. Anything that represents authority, the culture try to destroy it. Anything, any institution. I, I don't care if it's a church. I don't care if it's a government. I don't care if it's the police. I don't care if it's anything. Anything, they try to deconstruct it because we don't want to be under nobody. I don't want nobody telling me what to do, and that's what we do. A lot of, we, we don't want to we don't want to listen to nobody on no job. Nobody don't tell me what to do. I want I wake up and I want to go. I do what I want to do, and we deconstruct anything that looks like authority. Amen. And here we don't walk in honor, and it's hard for us to honor one another when we don't honor nobody. You can't cut honor on and off. It must be something that you possess. You think Pastor Cole making this up? Look at Romans twelve ten. It says, "Love one another with brotherly affection." Look at this. He says. Outdo one another in showing them love. <laughs> Outdo them by showing them honor. First Peter chapter 2, verse 17. He said, honor some people. Honor the people that you respect. I thought it was so funny. I've been teaching on respect. I told Noonday this. I've been preaching on respect and stuff. And I've been saying, well, you got to respect unconditionally. You're supposed to love unconditionally. <clears throat> And just in the midst of the conversation with somebody, I was like, well, yeah, I respect, I respect them when they respect me. I'm like, my God, you missed the whole series. Well, I've, been, I, I, I've, been, I've been preaching for 22 hours. You missed the whole thing I've been talking about. It's, 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 that's the whole point. And here, this is the point. The point is that we get we set in our ways in, in just a bad spot when even the word can't move you. That's a bad spot when even the word, when you deduce the word to your feelings. When you deduce the word to your personal experience, you're in a bad spot. Even when the word says we're supposed to honor everybody, I don't care. I don't respect the police. I don't care. I don't respect my boss, man. I don't care. I don't respect. They did this. They did. I didn't say you got to honor and you respect the, un the, the, the disrespectable things they do. I said we all, we all made, we're the Imago day. We all made in the image of God. And there's a, there's a standard that we ought to have. And here we miss it. You know what we miss? We miss it in the homes. That's why there's no honor. Because the first place I'm to learn honor is not at church. <laughs> the first place I'm to learn honor is at my house. And here I'm missing it when I don't teach when I don't teach my, my children honor. Y'all y'all bump it up just a little bit. See, they're a little cold. They're a little cold. Uh, see, because I'm trying to tell you, we, we 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 miss it with our children. If I don't teach my children how to honor and respect authority, I'm not befriending them. I'm crippling them. Thank you, Sister Reddick. That's why you, one of my favorite members. <laughs> I'm crippling my children. 
I crippled them. When that, whenever it is, and, and I, I, I was intending to say this in the, in the, in the series <clears throat> on, on, on marriage because my, my wife and I, there's it, something that showed me something good because I, 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 I sleep on Mondays. I sleep on Mondays, and I'm, I'm, I'm tired, y'all. Y'all, y'all, don't, y'all don't, you know, I, I ain't got to paint the picture. I'm just, I'm just tired. I'm drained on Mondays. I sleep. And so that when, during this pandemic and all this stuff, the kids be home. They making all this noise and all this stuff. And I said, I said, look, baby, whatever y'all do, y'all do what y'all do. When I'm asleep, come on, y'all, please let them kids keep them away. Stop knocking on the door. My name is Daryl. Leave me alone. Don't bother me. And see, what we do, what we do is, <laughs> what we do is, man, I ain't finna be chasing these kids. These little kids, we got little kids. They're gonna be everywhere. They're gonna be doing this. They're gonna be this. They're gonna be doing this. They're gonna be doing this. And, and here, what we do is, we, we, we teach our children, yes. don't listen to your daddy. Go on and do what you want to do. Go on. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody been to chase no kid. We teach our children disrespect. Yeah. Now, thank, now, thank God I got, I got a wife to say, okay, baby, did she do what she got to do? She, 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 she takes him with her. She don't, don't go in there. Don't bother that. Do he's asleep. He's resting. He whatever. Leave him alone. As soon as I come and do it, I have a look on my face. She'll know. They'll come. They'll jump on me. And she'll say, leave him alone. Dad, let daddy get herself. This is what she said. Let daddy get herself together. And that's honoring. But whenever it is that we don't even honor people in a place to where we don't even give them. I'm talking about in our home now. I'm talking about in our home. And this is where we, this is where we, don't, this is where we don't get it. Because here, we just let our children do whatever the devil they want to do. We let them talk to people the way they want to talk to. We let them run rampant. We let them stay up all night, eat what they want to eat, do what they need to do. And then we wonder why. <laughs> When they start getting 16, 17, 18, 19 years old, we can't tell them Nathan Jones. And that's not a person. That, we, can't, we, can't, we can't tell them nothing. We can't tell them nothing. I'm sorry, y'all. This wasn't on my iPad. I just wanted to, I just wanted to say it. But, but here it is. This is what is on my iPad. I put it up for me. Honor flows from the church. <laughs> thank, you, thank you, Ariel. Honor flows from the, his house. It flows from the house. And here, if I don't see honor, I won't walk in honor. What, what is pastor trying to say? You can't pick and choose who you honor. It got to, it's, got to be, it's got to be in me. It got to be in me. I'm going to leave y'all alone. Let me leave y'all alone. It's y'all first Thursday back. Y'all I'm like, dog, I knew I should have stayed virtual. I, was, I kept, kept watching my season. I knew I should have kept watching my season. I'm watching my whole season on Netflix. And now he back up in here. And now he bothered me. I, I, he won't get me next week. The devil is alive. He won't get me next week. You're going to be right back. You're going to be right back on that camera, sir. Look, look, let me tell you. Look. No, I'm not either. Y'all don't get a replay. I ain't doing that no more. Look, uh, a, a, true, a true disciple, I'm saying, let's do, let's do a throwback Thursday. Let's do a throwback Thursday. <laughs> a true disciple, it's just good, y'all. It's just good. It's okay. It's so good. A, a true disciple, like, yeah, yeah, it's good. A true disciple, understand not just the principle of honor, but the position that is to be honored. Every position carries honor. I don't care if it's a trash man. I'm supposed to honor that individual for their position. Every position carries honor. Every position, I don't care if it's a teller at McDonald's. <laughs> every person and every position carries honor. And this is why it's an overspill. Because if we, if we just treat people any kind of way based off of who they are, you can't cut it on and cut it off. It's going to come a day in time when your, when your authority, when the person that's in the position, when it's your boss man, your boss lady, when the person that's in authority, you're not going to stop to try to honor them and respect them. That's, we, we just say whatever we want to say to people that are in position. They, they got high like I got high. They man like I'm man. They, they put on their britches like I put on my. I keep telling you, I don't know how. Y'all don't know how I put my britches on. I keep trying to tell you. My wife stand on the end of the dresser and I jump down in my britches. I, I don't, I, y'all, y'all don't know how I put my britches on. I'm talking about you. Let me put them on backwards and swim them around. Now, you don't know how I put my bridges on. <laughs> anyway, I was like, oh, they're on backwards. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> she said, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> my point is, you all, every position. Somebody say every position. Every position, every position carries on. Let me, let me roll. First Corinthians, first Chronicles, rather, 1238. Ooh, I got to go. First Chronicles, 1238. Look at this. Amplified. Look at this. They, 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 they came to anoint David to be king. Look at this. And all these being men of war, this is good, arrayed in battle, what? What's that word? Order came with a perfect and sincere heart to Hebron to make David king over all of Israel. Look at this. These brothers understood rank and honor. All of them was warriors, but they were saying, we're going to get in our order and our rank and we're anointing David. All of them could fight, but David was the king. All of them was warriors, but David was the king. 
All of them know how to, how to wield their weapons and, and shoot their bows and throw their arrows. But David was a king. And here you got to understand that, that whatever position, whether it's been delegated authority or God-given authority, that position must, must be honored. You can't treat everybody the same because we're not. Amen. We're the same in the sense that God loves us all and we all have, have value. But what we do, we're not the same. So, so if I decide to go to Shans tonight and perform open heart surgery, oh, you're going to treat me like an open heart surgeon? So we get so saved and so deep when it comes to the things of God. We want the same authority and same rank and the same value, but we don't try that nowhere else but in the kingdom. We lose our mind when it comes to the kingdom. We, I, can't, I can't go. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brother Deal. I appreciate it. You get, you get seven praise breaks on Sunday if you like, sir. As long as it's within that, them 30 minutes. As long as it's within 30 minutes. You are feeling that? I'm going to usher you right on off, off stage. And, and, and then number 35. Let me go. Anyway, so the Bible says, I'm just messing with him. That's my boy. You know I'm just playing. Look, look, Ephesians 4.11. I got to go. I'm, ooh, I'm almost out of time. Ephesians 4.11 says, y'all can't, y'all can't, y'all can't, y'all can't turn off. Y'all can't scroll up. Y'all right about this time. Y'all remember, ah, let me go see what's up. And y'all can't do it. I got a captive audience. Y'all can't do that. Look at, look at Ephesians 4. <laughs> right about this time. Look, he's looking at the back of his paper like, how oh, much more of this? Look, Ephesians 4.11 says, and he gave apostles. Look at this. And God gave apostles. <laughs> <laughs> the prophets, I'm so happy y'all here. I'm sorry, I'm just happy y'all here. Y'all gonna be back next week, please. Anyway, it says the evangelists, the what? The shepherds and teachers. Look at this. Why, why did God give us that? Why did God give us the body? Look at this. Why did He give us these vessels? They call the fivefold ministry: the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, the teachers. Look at verse 12. To equip the saints for the work of the ministry. For the building up of the body of Christ. So here, I told you, look, we gotta be, can't be ignorant. 2 Corinthians 2.11, can't be ignorant of Satan's devices. Yeah. Satan wants to stop you from being equipped. Because when, you, when you're not equipped, you can't do the work of the ministry. And the way you're supposed to be equipped is through the fivefold ministry gift. It's through your leader. It's through your spiritual gift. But if I'm angry or don't honor them, I can't get the equipping that I need. And if I don't get the equipping that I need, the ministry doesn't go forth. God said, I'm supposed to be equipped. I'm going to be complete. That's what equipped means, to be completed. To be bringing someone or something to completion. All of us are missing something in our lives. And God gives us spiritual leaders to help complete us in that area, to mature us in that area, to develop us in that area. And here, my friend, if you, <laughs> Lord have mercy, let me, let me go, let me go, let me go. I was going to read Jeremiah 315. God gives us pastors after his own heart. I'm going to leave that alone, and we'll come back to that another time. But here, I, I will say this. You can't be fed with the wrong posture. I'm supposed to get fed. I'm supposed to get fed. Timothy was a, a, a man of honor. I can't be fed in the wrong posture. And here's, here's my thing. I wouldn't be in a ministry. If it didn't honor the leader. I'm wasting my time. I wouldn't be in the ministry if I didn't honor the leader. You know why? Because I, this needs to be my prayer. My prayer needs to be God either change my heart or change the one that's feeding me. Because I'm wasting my time if I don't, if I, 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 because I can't pick and choose what I own. I can't pick and choose and, just, and break everything down and say this and nitpick and criticize and talk about this doing it. No, I, I, need, I need to ask God to move me. I'm wasting my time. I'm spinning my wheels because I can't be fed properly with the, with the wrong posture. So, 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 so a true disciple understands, fill it in, the person <clears throat> that is to be honored. I got to go. It's a person. Not only is it the principle, everybody deserves honor. You may, you, I'm not telling you to honor the disrespectable things they do. I'm telling you to honor the individual. <clears throat> now the principle, then the position, now the person. In other words, there's some people you got equity with. There's some people we've been through some things together. The, the, the per, the, see, it, it's, one thing, it's one thing for you, again, to know somebody afar, but it's, somebody else, it's something else to know somebody who's been there with you, that have prayed with you, that have labored with you. That's why 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 says, we ask you, brothers, to respect those who labor among you, that are over you in the Lord, that are over you in the Lord. Well, ain't nobody over me. That are, the Bible says, that are over you in the Lord. And admonish you. First verse, verse 13 says, and esteem them very highly in love because of their works. And then he says, be at peace among yourselves. First Timothy 5, 17. Let the elders who rule well be considered worthy of double honor. honor. 
That's actually talking about money right there. So that's my, it's one of my favorite scriptures. But anyway, and we ain't gonna bother that. But it's really talking about money. It's really, really, that's, that's really that's, I love I love the message paraphrase. It says uh, double bonus. You know, look that up when you get a chance. Tattoo that on your heart. Look, it said, it said it says especially who labor in preaching and teaching. Pa the Apostle Paul dealt with this his entire ministry. And believe it or not, we're gonna finish in the next in the next ten minutes. I got ten minutes. I'm wrapping this up, right? Y'all believe I can do it in ten minutes? Clap in ten minutes. I'm gonna clap. What? Clap in ten. Clap. We're gonna do it in ten minutes. We're doing ten minutes. Well, y'all. Oh my God. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> y'all ain't, ain't been going that long, huh? We ain't been going that long. We remember that. That, that, that was a set them up. Yeah, I'm gonna finish. I got ten minutes. I'm finished. I, I promise you, because I want y'all to come back. All right, you're scared me one time now. Come on now, look. <laughs> the Apostle Paul would establish churches, found churches, and as soon as he leave, persons from the outside or the inside will come try to undo everything that God had done. He tells them in, in Acts chapter 20, Acts chapter 20 says, uh, church, the, uh, the elders of Ephesus, he says, when I leave you, grievous wolves. He didn't say from the outside. He said, from among you are going to come in. So Paul was fighting this his entire ministry, and because of, especially with the church of Corinth, the church of Corinth was the most gifted church. But it was the most problematic church. And can I tell you, the, the most difficult people, the pastor, are gifted people. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sacred, what Paul says. <laughs> Sacred, because just as gifted as I am, that's just how, how many incomplete areas I have in my life. Secrets 11 to 5. I, me too. It said, it said, I, I, the difference between me and many is I know my weaknesses. I know my blind spots. I know the areas I need. But, but we be so spiritually blind. I'm, I'm just good. Oh, I'm on my 10 minutes. I got to go. So, look what Paul says. Indeed, I consider that I am not the least inferior to these. What, look what he says. These super apostles. Who do you think Paul is speaking to? Paul is speaking to about, he's speaking to this Corinthian church about these people that they're just eating everything that they say. They eat everything off their hand. They tell them that Paul says left and the, the super apostles come say go, go right. Paul says up, they say down. They're trying to undo everything and that's exactly what we do. But when I'm connected somewhere, I don't let any and everybody just come whisper in my ear and I'm just in and everything following everything. My mama say don't me eat from everybody's house. And Paul had to deal with this entire ministry. 1 Corinthians 9 and 1, he says, I am, he said, am I not, he said, am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Have I, uh, he said, have I not seen Jesus our Lord? Am, look at this. Are not you my workmanship in the Lord? Yeah. Paul said in verse 2, if to, other, if to others I'm not an apostle, at least I am to you, yeah. for you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. In other words, Paul says your growth is the legitimacy of my ministry. Paul says the fact that you've been growing in the things of God, the fact that we've been in this thing together, the fact that we walk through all of this stuff together, you ought to know. I don't, these people around the corner, I, can't, I don't got nothing to do with them, but I need to know because you ought to know this person. Somebody say the person. person. The person. The person needs to be honored. The true discipleship understands. Here it is. The power of honor. The power. Honor carries some power. Uh, Psalms 133. I'm not going to read it all. 133, 1 through 3. But God just basically says that whenever it is we're properly aligned. Verse 3, he says, it's there that I will command the blessing. When I'm postured properly, that's where I'll be blessed. You can't be blessed and you're out of place. You can't be blessed and you're supposed to be here and you're over there. Or you're supposed to be over there and you're here. You got to be properly aligned. And God said, it's there. I'm going to command. I'm going to command the blessing. Philippians chapter 2, verse 23. Let me wrap it up. He said, I hope therefore to send him just as soon as I see how it's going to go with me. I'm going to send Timothy as soon as it goes. I got to see how it's going with me. I'm not going to send you, Timothy, until I figure out what's going on with me. Verse 24, he says, and I trust in the Lord that, that shortly I myself will come also. Let's wrap this thing up because not only did Paul use himself as an example, not only did he use Timothy, but he's going to bring somebody else to the witness stand. An aligned disciple or life is one marked by, uh-oh, here's a dirty word, friendliness. You thought I was going to say anointing. You thought I was going to say power. <laughs> somebody that's just simply friendly. Philippians 2.25 says, I, and look at this, I have thought it necessary to send you Ephroditus, my brother. Hmm. You, you say, all right, mm, all right, Ephroditus, my brother. This is Ephroditus' brother I've been telling y'all about for the last 16 weeks. This is brother that literally came and brought Paul this offering, brought Paul this gift. Ephroditus is the one that brought him. And Ephroditus took with him this book that we're studying, the book of Philippians, back to the church of Philippi. Ephroditus was a bad boy. Paul said, this is my brother. And I used to wonder all the time, Brother Wright, I used to wonder why my mama used to call me Little Ephroditus. I didn't understand that. 
I never understood why, 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 why people just be like just saying, why is you, you know what you remind me of somebody. I'm like, what's that now? I say, Ephroditus. Look, look what his name means. Lovely. Handsome. Charming. Shout out by. Oh, I saw you. She said, mm, mm, mm. Hey, Ephroditus' cousin. I don't know about you. Oh, I saw you. She said, don't be your man. I saw you. And mama said, boy, you remind me of Ephroditus. Anyway. <laughs> Every day was lovely, handsome, and charming. The, the season saints was building me up at the afternoon. They don't come and talk to me at ten thousand all. It's like, Pastor, you are after that, Pastor. I said, I said, go and talk to me, season saints. Y'all stop. Tell me more. Tell me more. I said, y'all stop. Let me get out of here. I'm done. I gotta, I gotta get out of here. Look, I gotta, five more minutes, y'all. I gotta get out of here. This brother, look what, look what, look what Paul says. He said he is. He said he's my what? He's my, he's my brother. He's my brother. Look, look what this word brother means. It means that you're my comrade. You're my friend. There's affection. There's feelings there. See, see, Timothy was his son. Ephroditus was his friend. If you're going to do ministry for real, you need a partner. You need, you need a friend. You need somebody you can be able to let your hair down because I'm not going to vent to my son. I'm not going to vent to my spiritual daughters. I'm not going because you can't help me. Come on here. I, I need to vent up. I need to vent. I need to vent across. I don't vent down. You be like, oh, Pastor, get yourself together. Pastor, no. Oh, Pastor, yeah. Didn't you say I heard? Come on, Pastor. No. Oh, man, I'm crying to y'all about something. Yeah. Oh, Pastor, going to be all right. <laughs> Come on, all right. All right. My God. Yeah, everybody need a friend. But the problem is, the scripture says, Proverbs 18, 24, I believe it is, it says, he that have friends. I'm going to show himself friendly. Hmm. So that's why I'm so glad that the truth and love way is where we always striving to become a friendlier church than we were yesterday. Can I tell you this? It, it, it makes a difference, you all. It makes a difference when we're friendly. It makes a difference when we're loving. It makes a difference when we're welcoming. People get beat up out there. I, I expect, and, this, this, and, and, and we got a lot of individuals. This is their first church. I'm their first pastor. And it's, it's, it's got a lot of individuals. And, and they be like, man, I thought people did this in the street. This the mafia. Church folk, cutthroat. Y'all cutthroat around here. And they be like, I thought we did this at the club. I thought we did this in gang initiation. You mean tell me y'all, mother, mother, what's the name, roll like that? You mean tell me brother Bobo do that? It mess you up. Go on, talk to me sideline preacher. It mess you up. Hey, you be like, man, I'm going. Where? Well, come on, let's say, let me go back to my. Anyway, I can't. I can't say that. And a line disciple or line life is marked by. Look at this participation. I'm done. Participation. I heard that. Verse 25. I have thought it necessary. I'm sending you Ephrodite, my brother and my fellow who. My fellow worker, this brother Ephrodite, he was working with Paul. He was participating with Paul. That's what fellow worker is, is one that participates, is the one that's in the field, is one that's grinding, is one that's helping and serving alone. Ephrodite was a bad boy. And a line disciple, is, a line disciple or life is one that's marked by a common enemy. It's oftentimes why we're not as friendly as we need to be. It's because we recognize, we forget to recognize that we all have but one enemy. Our enemy is not the person that offended me, the person that dogged me, the person did this and did that. That's not my enemy. My real enemy is the devil himself. We have but one adversary. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness. But I don't know about you. Come on, yeah, clap to that. I don't know about you. Have you ever been serving with somebody and got hit with friendly fire? I know I've showed somebody the ropes. They took them same ropes and hung me with them. I've, I've, David said my own familiar friend David said the one we walk we commune we worship together we've done we, we, we studied the word together we, we've helped one another encouraged one another and here we'll get hit by somebody who's supposed to be on our side we have to make sure that we, we, we're fighting the, 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 the real enemy Philippians chapter 2 verse 25 I, I, I thought it necessary to send you Ephroditus my, come on let's read together my what my brother come on it's on the screen and my what my fellow worker and what else and my fellow soldier we, we, we fighting this thing together we, we're in a war y'all it's not time for no furlough right now not no time for no break right now well you know COVID COVID ain't keeping you from the water park <laughs> COVID COVID ain't keeping you from, from yeah, let me get out of there Philippians 2.25 he says not only oh y'all didn't like that nobody said nothing he said I, I, I thought necessary send you Ephroditus my brother come on it's on the screen my brother what else? My fellow worker. Come on, talk to me, y'all. And my fellow who? Soldier 
and your messenger and minister to my need. I'm going to send, I'm, I'm sending effort that you send him to me. And I'm getting ready to send him back to you. And that word literally means apostle. He was sent by the church. Not apostle sent from the Lord Jesus Christ, but one being sent by the church. I don't got time to unpack that. But Ephroditus was his brother that ministered to the need of the apostle Paul. He looked after Paul. How did he look after Paul? What is Paul referring to? He's talking about what Ephroditus came and gave him. Talking about what he gave to him. That's what means. It's, it's, a, it's a, almost as if a priestly office, a priestly attire. Uh, oh my God! Philippians 4:10. Look what he says. If, if, if we're gonna get to this in 2026. We're gonna get to this. Look what he said. He said, "I rejoice in the Lord greatly, that now at great length, look at this, you have revived your concern for me. I'm there, look at it, and you indeed, you were indeed concerned for me." But you had no opportunity. You have a concern, but didn't have an opportunity. But look, skip down to verse 18. I have received, look at this, full payment. Look at it. And more. Come on, let's read this part together. I am well supplied. Stop right there. You ought to highlight that. You ought to, you ought to, you ought to mark that in your Bible. And you ought to say that over, I'm well supplied. But you can't say that if you're not a giver now. It ain't, it ain't for you if you, if you ain't no giver. You know, if you... Anyway, <laughs> he says, I'm, Paul says, I'm well supplied, having received from who? Ephroditus, the gifts you sent me, and the gift you gave me. Come on, sit up, givers. Come on, sit up, tithers. He said, the gift you gave me, it was a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable to Paul, to God. When I give, I don't give to a man. Y'all good? And when I give, I don't give to a man. That's my, that's my thing to stop. Can I, okay, I got it. When I give, when I give, I don't give to man. I give to God. When I give, I'm giving unto the Lord. He said, I receive what it is that you gave, and God have received it here because here it is. I give. It has nothing to do with an individual. It has everything to do with God. It has a sign. Last thing I think it is, look at that. And the line of life is one marked by being others focused. You don't even write that, write that in. I've just told you that this, this, is, this is what you're going to say it again and again. Others focus. Verse 26, for he has been longing for you all and has been distressed. Everybody has been longing for you because you heard that he was ill. Y'all heard he was ill. And but, but here God says to Ephroditus, here, y'all heard rather, Church of Philippi, y'all heard he was sick. But Ephroditus is, is no longer sick because an aligned life is one marked by a personal testimony. God gave him a testimony. He raised him up. Verse 27. Indeed, he was ill, near to death. But God had mercy on him. And not only on him, but on me also, lest I have sorrow upon sorrow. Wave after grief. Grief after grief. Wave and wave after grief is what Paul is saying. Verse 28. I am more eager to send him, therefore, that you may rejoice at seeing him again, and that I may be less anxious. Verse 29, so receive him in the Lord with all joy and honor him as such. What? In other words, what's going on? Paul said, I'm going to send you Ephroditus because you heard he was sick. And because you heard he was sick, you feel in some type of way. I still need his help, but I'll feel better if I send him back to you. It, it, it's really others focus. Last verse. And the line disciple is life marked by faith. Marked by faith. What, what we get this at, bro, Pastor? It's right here in the verse, verse 30. And he nearly died for the work of Christ. Here, here's the faith. Here's faith. Somebody say faith. Here's faith. faith. Risking his life to complete what was lacking in your service to me. Ephroditus risked his life to help you. You needed to do something. Everybody risk his life. That's what the risk means to expose to chance or loss or damage. In other words, everybody stepped out on faith, knowing that God was going to help him. God was going to secure him. And here many theologians suggest as Paul, as Paul was in Philippian jail, and that, not, not Philippian jail, as, as, as Acts chapter 16, as Paul was in this prison, as he was locked down, everybody was on his way to him, and his brother got sick. And instead of him going back, he kept on going. And they heard that Ephroditus was sick. And Paul said, you know what? This brother risked his life. I just want to ask you as we're done. I just want to ask you, man, what, what are you going to step out on God's word to do? What are you going to risk as relates to standing up for the word of God, the things of God, honoring God and saying, God, you know what? I'm going to step out on your word and I'm going to honor you in every area of my life because you, you absolutely, positively, you deserve it. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some praise.
on behalf of everyone at Truth and Love Ministries, we want to thank you for joining us for our virtual worship experience. We want to thank you for your likes and your shares, your comments and your emojis. But we also want to invite you to partner with us as we continue to be the hands and the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. You do know that he told us that we ought to feed the hungry, we ought to clothe the naked, and we ought to be the church. And you can help us to continue to do just that through your generosity. And there are three easy, safe, and secure ways that you can do just that. You can text the word T-I-L-JAX, one word, T-I-L-JAX, to the number 77977. You can go to our website, www.truthandlove.tv, or you can go to the Apple Store or the Google Play Store, search for Truth and Love Jack, download our app, and you can give that way. We thank you for your participation. We thank you for your generosity, and we love you, and we'll see you next time. Here comes the church. God bless you.